Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 70 of the I Am Me podcast. And in today's episode, we are doing a Facebook Zoom live recording, which is also going to be converted into our, onto the podcast. So super excited. I'm interviewing one of my superstar superstar um, and newest one of my newest members in the trading squad yes so this is going to be another podcast trading related but i think it's also very important to hear this person's story because um you know she's an awesome individual someone who i have close to my heart now already but we're going to hear from her and because she's going to share all of her journey so far right and i think really important because you know as i've said in previous episodes before the whole premise of what this podcast was, was to showcase everyday people who are achieving success in some way, shape or form. Because the fact of the matter is, no matter what stage in life you are, there is always going to be someone who is wanting to be at your level, wanting to be in the position that you are. And I think too many of us, unfortunately, get stuck in wanting to be like the top 5%, seeing those idols, people that you really aspire to be, but it can be very unattainable for them to see to that potential to reach for themselves. So again, I really wanted to bring this beautiful, lovely lady on being back to share her story um not in regards to trading because she has only just got started but sharing the whole thing but how are you going back good yeah good thanks how are you doing i am fantastic i appreciate you taking your time to um be on this you just did a four-hour drive just to bloody get on this or even longer just to come and have a bit of a chat with me on a saturday and anyone who's watching this on facebook live now as well i appreciate you guys who are tuning in because you could easily be doing something else but make sure you do listen in and if you've got any questions at all feel free to whack them in the comment um comment box on facebook and i'll uh, i'll do the best to be able to try to answer them or even for beck you know you can feel free to answer them so beck i think the best thing to do to start with is give us a little bit of like an elevated pitch of who you are like who are you? What do you do? What's your background? Let's do that. Okay. So I am back. <laughs> Current, uh, yeah. Um, and I currently work for uh, the Department of Defense. Um, I have a background in administration. Um, and I, yeah, pretty much administration my whole life um, for 15 years. Um, and yeah, um, I am a mother of two beautiful teenagers um and a single mum and yeah that's pretty much at the moment where I'm at <laughs> no of course that's good thank you no and uh, for those who have watched my Instagram story I did a post uh, I think it was two days ago I was talking about how there's definitely been a, a huge shift in in what I'm focusing on um and also the organization with SJ as well but you know for those who didn't see the story I spoke about personally how I just throughout my entire life, I've had a lot more close relationships and friendships with females rather than males. Unfortunately, due to a lot of stuff that happened as a kid, you know, I just had a lot of bad experiences with males, which just, you know, made that you know connection with them a lot harder as opposed to being females. So as I've progressed through life, plus also through um, fitness, running mums and bubs um, boot camps, I've just had so much more connection and genuine connection and respect for females than males. Sorry, blokes, but I don't know. It doesn't mean you can't learn how to do this as well. But for me, as well, growing up as my, you know, for majority of my childhood, I was with mum and she was, you know, she a single mum raising me. So I know what it's like. And I think that, you know, there's a lot more and more, there's so many single mums out there who are going through quite a lot and it's going to unfortunately get tougher with what's happening and they are reaching out. And I think a lot of us, especially with what we're doing now, they're too afraid to dabble in what they see as being really scary, being the financial markets, because it's such, you know, seen as such a male dominated area, you know, investing all these figures and stuff like that. But, you know, I've personally had about six or seven really powerhouse females come in, Beck being one of them, you know, just willing to give this a go. And yes, they've been uncomfortable. Yes, it's been scary, but willing just to have a, have a crack. Do you want to like to chat a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so I have, um, trading has been one of the scary things. I've, every time I saw a chart, like with the, the, um, the squiggles, <laughs> with the ups and downs, that, freaked me out so I never and I've never really looked into um uh you know the stocks and stuff like that that hasn't it's been too scary to really interest me so um when I was watching Dom's um stories and things like that when he was showing bit like his trades and how he's doing them and all that sort of stuff it started piquing my interest in that aspect and then um yeah I decided to reach out and um then got into trade house so mm. 
that's cool that's cool and like well like i know you saw some of my stuff but what like what speak during because i know you spoke to me about it but what piqued your interest initially in the first place like because i know you'd looked at trading before Mm -hmm. um so just the fact that um for long term so i'm wanting to build i'm currently building um, a business and I'm wanting to um, use this trading because I see that as a long-term potential for wealth. Um, I'm not doing it. I know it's not a get rich quick type scheme. Um, it's more like learning to the skill and then just being able to grow it over time. Um, and yeah, I was pretty much wanting to keep, get, um, get more stability in my um, finances that way. Mm -hmm. And that's good. You really hit the nail on the head. And that's what I think a lot of people do. And unfortunately, and for those who are, have been podcast listeners for a while, you've heard me speak about, you know, how the society really is not set up for us to <laughs> succeed in life. It's really quite the opposite. And the things that we get taught, the basics, the understanding, the financial education through the platform is just second to none in its own and just so pivotal that they're the things that we should be taught in school and we're not. And so I really do recommend that if there's anyone out there who's watching this now or listening to this and you do have any kind of interest to have these knowledges and have this as a skill set, you know, you really need to look into it, no matter how uncomfortable you think that it may be or how um, you know how scary it may be or you may think you can't do it at all um, I do believe that you it's, you definitely can because the system is really really good now obviously Beck you have only just like literally gotten started with what like not even a month in let's say thereabouts plugging away through the platform and I always tell all my um, students you know we, we probably depending on your level of ability I know you personally obviously you, you're juggling so many different things but you know depending on how much time you have available I always tell people you're probably going to need about four months before you can learn the skill before you can start making any kind of money in the markets and and that's important as well because we don't want people to burn you know come in put in a couple of thousand bucks and then lose it overnight you know we teach people how to start up with a fake trading account like as in using demo money and doing pretend trades and building that and growing that so then not only do we have confidence in when we're teaching people but then you can have that confidence to um go out there and get that but for someone who's sort of only just gotten started into it as well like do you want to tell us a little bit about like how you've been going through it and how you feel yeah, well, um, when I first jumped into, like when I first started my very first call, that was awesome. Like it was, it fired me up. I was like, yes, I'm keen. I'm keen as mustard just looking at the platform. And then when I actually got in there, it was, I was really amazed at how well set out it is. Um, so it goes through and literally tells you every single thing. So if I was looking at different parts of the, like it, at different session lessons, I'd have a question, but I'd sit there and I'd wait because two or three lessons down, the question would be answered. So it's literally, it feels like a plug and play type scenario with the platform. So I was, um, it sort of made me not as, not as scared. Like, so as I'm going through, I'm starting to get more confident and more confident. And then as I'm going along, I'm doing marking up my charts and then actually be putting them through, um, through to you or um, SJ, it's been, and to actually say, yes, this is good. And you know, you're getting this and you're getting this. It's such a, um, liberate it's like empowerment like it empowers you and it makes you feel so awesome to go yes I'm actually getting it you know and something that I didn't think I could ever do I'm actually being able to identify a lot of things and yeah it's so empowering really empowering yeah that's been it's true and you're right it is quite empowering it's just again we when we leave school we just stop sort of like trying to learn new skills ones that really put us you know and, and throw that are completely out of our norms or in comfort so that can definitely have that effect it when you do begin this as a complete noob um but you are absolutely you're absolutely killing it and it does provide a lot of benefit for you when when you are starting to see those results but like and again you know so we obviously still demo trading so you know, we get our, we've got some goals set we've, we've set down a plan you know we want to get live trading within an x amount of time so that's really cool and you know, keep doing on that i know you're doing really well but do you want to touch on because as you everyone knows by now obviously my background that i really like to focus on with everyone is personal development growth uh, making sure that we're setting goals we're working on the mindset because that's just important for life in general but when you do start to experience and dabble in trading the association and the mindset required for trading is so incredibly important because you know the markets is very very emotional and if you come into trading emotionally like if you come in angry or you know whatever it's something happened during the day and then you start to bring that to the charts it can affect you and also that ability to detach yourself from the outcome so you know if a trade does go wrong which it does for me all the time if i lose a bit of money um i need to make sure that 
I detach myself from that emotion. I don't try to chase that back. I actually step away. I don't trade for the rest of the day. And then I focus and reassess the next, the next day. So do you want to talk a little bit about, and I, before we go into the background of like of your personal development journey, like do you want to just share a little bit about your experiences with it so far? Um, yeah. So I just, um, everyone's just really um, supportive in terms of your personal development, because obviously they know um, that, you know, the way you, um, are thinking on that day, it reflects on your chart. So I just, uh, one thing I really do like the fact that every Tuesday night that you guys have, that Trade House has a mindset call for like a good hour where we sit there and we discuss different things about either, you know, what are people have been going through on the that week or, you know, ways to um, help with your mindset for trades and all that sort of stuff. So um, that is very powerful. I've gotten some really good nuggets out of Tuesday night school um, calls. Um, but yeah, that's definitely um, what, and it's not just on that Tuesday night too. Like when you're talking to the mentors like yourself and SJ, um, you guys, are, you guys also have, um, have the, you, you guys are all about mindset as well and, and setting us setting us like a piece and, you know, help making sure we're in a good mindset as well. So mm. it's all around like everyone you talk to. It's it's definitely, um, yeah, good like, in yeah. that response, yeah. No, well, that's the thing as well. As I've mentioned many times, like for me personally, I just want to focus on the four key pillars of life and anyone, any of my students that come through and people that I start to mentor, whether it be trading or just in life in general, I want them to have that focus on the four key pillars. And if you haven't heard them before, that is health, wealth, love, and fulfillment. They're the ones that I've personally identified. And, you know, the reason being four, just like four, you know, stable legs, build on a house, you want that even balance. Now, depending on what season you are in life, yes, there is going to be certain times that you need to spend a bit more time in one of those pillars. You know, if you're going through a bit of a time where you know your health's out of alignment and you put on a whole heap of kilos you're probably going to spend a bit more time focusing in your health but i just try to make sure that every day that goes by i don't spend at least a bit of my time in that day in one of the in all of those four areas to keep that balance and keep that synchronicity because again how many people do you know out there that might be a multi-millionaire but their health is absolutely shit or you know someone who uh, might be the most shredded person but can't rub two dollars together and you know you've seen them and i don't want that i just want balance and i want everyone that comes into this community and just into my life in general to understand how important that is and to help identify and break those down but you know i guess you know we've spoke a little bit of trading that's cool and you know you're in the right path. Like just to sort of wrap the trading aspect into it, because I don't want this just to be all about trading, you know, obviously just re just for every listeners now to understand this. So obviously bet completely, you know, no idea about trading before. So been watching my journey for a while and had the courage to reach out and willing to give this a go to the point where she actually had to bug me multiple times for the backstory for people that don't know, because uh, I wasn't following back on Instagram and went into my um into my message requests. And I don't check them as often as I probably should because um, I do get smashed with a lot of messages. But um, yeah, I saw it and she'd messaged me four or five times saying, hey, I want to know this trading. What this was over probably a two to three month period. So I appreciate you for one, just keep busting my balls and, and actually finally uh me seeing the message so that's another thing as well guys like you know just anything in life if you try keep trying keep trying and um and you know if you are again listening to this and you're like someone like beck who just has no idea but is wanting to give this a go and then equally as well if you're someone who's already in the area and this is where i want to start talking to you with as well because i know you do other businesses but if you are someone else who currently does other businesses you know you might be in another network marketing company for example like or do some kind of side hustle or something like that that you produce which does you know provide you a good bit of income and this is a perfect um asset that you can put to complement that or you might be someone who invests heavy in the shares or asx or the stock market which is fantastic or crypto which is again fantastic but all of those ones unless you leverage trading on crypto all of those other streams are things where you literally you're putting money in and you're hoping it goes up whereas when it comes to crypto uh, crypto when it comes to forex and trading on the financial markets is you get to profit on the fluctuations of the market so whether the price goes up or goes down you can still make money it's just how it works is that's why it's very very powerful so but i guess you know do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, going a little bit deeper into your journey because yes it took a lot of courage for you to reach out to me but you know, I feel, and well, I know that personally because we've had the discussion, but what, tell us like, how do you get to where you are now? Like, where were you 10 years ago? What's desired? Because you've gone through so much change in like the last year alone. What was the point and why did you start to make and want that change? Um, so I started my, I guess, spiritual 
or my um, journey through mindset back in 2013. Um, so I wanted to learn how to meditate, like, um, because um, I, you know, I wasn't in a good place um, and I wanted to get my mental health back in, like, rein it in. And I never knew how to, how to meditate. So I went and did a course called Vipassana. Now, if anyone doesn't know what Vipassana is, <laughs> it's like a 10 day medication course where you go in, you don't talk to anyone, you don't look at anyone, you don't have any phones, you don't have any writing material, nothing. You go in there just yourself, your clothes, and you have a bed provided. You have a five star vegetarian diet for 10 straight days. You have no contact with the outside world. And literally, you go in 4 a.m., you go meditate for two hours, go have breakfast. And then, you know, and you do this throughout the day. So you meditate for probably about from 4 a.m. till 8.30 at night um, and in this big hall and you have breakfast, lunch, dinner in between and a little bit of a break. But majority of the time you're learning how to meditate. Now, when I went into that, I didn't realise you, how much your mind chatters, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how, you know, you don't know until you're in a quiet room in the space going within. Um, so, and this is pretty much what Vipassana is. It's to go within and to that was where my big thing was like, cause I did and another reason why I did that was because I, I didn't know how to be by myself and I didn't know how to be alone by myself without having anyone around me either or having distractions. So um, this was a big key thing. Um, it was, it took a lot by the end of it, long story short, uh, by the end of it, I was able to meditate and learn how to um, control my thoughts um, and through the breath. So um, that was one big, I rec highly recommend it for anyone who wants to learn quiet in their mind. It's a, it's definitely an experience, but you have to be ready for it. So um, that's where I started. Um, and then as years got on, um, I had um, just on, touch on like marital issues and stuff like that throughout that period of time on and off. Um, and then um, we separated in 2019. Um, and then I sort of went on a big, like between that, I sort of been up and down, up and down with my, you know, doing meditations and all that sort of stuff. Like I, um, I even went to church, um, and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, and just become like trying to heal myself because I felt that there was, you know, I had, I had a lot of healing that I needed to do. Um, and then as I progressed, um, it got to yeah it just started getting more from 2019 like I started I started um exercising like going to the gym um and then that was my meditation as well so and then getting myself into a little routine changing my diet and stuff like that fast forward to 2020 um I moved to Melbourne um and then lockdown <laughs> so that was another big growth um for me because um yeah I had to um, I, I, I was at the gym and then I had to sort of change my mindset with the gym as well because I had to do home workouts. So I was always one of those people I could never do home workouts. This is, yeah, so um, I had to change my mindset on that and flick it and be like, no, I'm going to do home workouts. So I disciplined myself and did home workouts throughout the whole lockdown. And that was my first thing where I was like, okay, cool. If I can do this and I can you know, if I can make my, well, not make us, change my mindset, flip my mind and, fig, and, and and if I can do home workouts, even though I told myself I couldn't, um, told myself those stories, um, then this is, then I can do anything. So um, I, that was probably the pivotal moment in, in terms of any, like anything from now, then to now, now. <laughs> um, and then I, I'm, I'm a very big meditator, so I'll meditate twice a day. Um, I've got a, um, a morning routine where, you know, I get up at 3.30, I'm at the gym by four, I do an hour and a half workout, I come home, I have I meditate for 20 minutes, I read, I journal, and then I have breakfast and then I go to work. So that's my... Not cut you off, but so where where did that come from though, to, to know to do that and to want to do that, that kind of morning routine? Um, so I was always, um, I always did um get up not so early it's just gotten progressively earlier <laughs> as, the, as the years come months come but um I already did um myself I already um would go to the gym and then come home and meditate that's what I was just doing anyway because I wanted to come home um, and it's in the quiet moments then like I feel that when you come home you can just sit down and just that's when I could be quiet with my mind at that time in the morning because it's generally 
quite early. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'd had already done that. I just sort of added reading and all that sort of stuff into it mm-hmm. um, later down the track. But I, um, I think I, um, something I read, um, 75 day hard challenge. That's right. I, I looked at like that reading was in there 10 pages a day. So mm-hmm. I started doing that. Yeah. yeah like okay so you can see there you know you got to a crossroads in your life where you wanted to make some change and it's that meditation thing which by the way is awesome one thing i do really want to do it's on the bucket list of of things to do is a, is a silent retreat type thing which is what you said there where um yeah you know you just no interaction with well they had the silent treats generally do have other people around so that's pretty must be full on to just be there by yourself that would be even the next kind of level but um if i do strongly encourage everyone has that ability to you know you might not want to go and do like a full-on retreat for that long period of time but you know i guess my slight experience to that not to that same degree was when i was in quarantine and i had to be stuck in that one room and although we had access to pretty much everything and that we could we're just stuck in the one spot but just that simple thing of being stuck in the one space for 14 days not being able to go anywhere and you know you do start to have to find thing other things to do but you know i use that time to do almost like a silent retreat was reading and, and you just really find and you're it's true your, your mind chatters like crazy and if you're someone who already knows that when you're put into a position where you have no ability to not make the mind chatter that's like crazy but you learn so much about yourself so i appreciate you sharing that that'd be really cool actually to do a, a podcast just chatting about that that'd be one on its own and we'll have to do that another time but so i guess then and then like you know so you've gone through that and you've reached out i mean do you want to tell a little bit about like um the personal training stuff as well like oh yeah so um it came to end of last year and i was to the point where i, I didn't i'm like i sat myself down and i'm like what am i going to do with my life i do not know what i'm doing i don't want to keep on going the way i am because it's just like I've grown and don't get me wrong, I have grown up until this point, but to this point, I'm just like, I'm always like this and that and this and that. I want, I wanted something solid and I wanted to know what I was doing. So I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do? What, what lights me up? And one thing I thought about is what lights me up inside? What do I want to wake up every day and go? Yes. I 110% want to do this. This is going to spark my fire. I'm going to do this. Right. So um, I enjoy fitness. I enjoy exercising I enjoy going to the gym all the time so I thought well you know and I'm in I love to help people as well so I thought I wanted to I'm I'm, I'm like I'm going to do a PT I'm going to become a PT so I enrolled in a cert three and four in fitness um, which I'm currently doing part-time and I should be qualified come October this year um, because yeah I I just want to help people I want to help people through um, through you know um, fitness and also mindset as well um, helping them with it with the mental health like because it helps with mental health and mindset as well um, because then that also branches on to I do aroma zen as well which is um, it's a three-part process where um, it's bouncing the chakras with essential oils which then goes into a yoga nidra and then into a sound bath so people um, when they come along to these sessions they um, they heal themselves and you know it helps with anxiety and all that sort of stuff as well so i'm kind of wanting to join the two together mm-hmm. and that and then you combine trading on top of that and also doing you know the business side of things as well so i do and this is what you know i loved when we first had that conversation because she literally beck just told me that i'm doing all of this and then i want to do this as well and like i guess the you know we've had conversations where it's been a little bit like you, you there's times where you probably have like taken on a little bit more and but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's just all about, you don't know until you know. So if it is a bit too much, that's fine. We can make adjustments in life, but it's better off taking on too much than not taking on anything at all and not taking the risk at all, which is what the vast majority of people do. Um, but I just, I guess really just, it's really important because I saw what she said and I, oh, I heard what you said, sorry. Um, but for the listeners to just take that in and if you really summarize everything that she her whole story is really inspiring but it's like okay I got to a point in my life 
there's a crossroads. I'm no longer happy with the current path and trajectory of where I was going. I knew I wanted to do more and be more and try to create something. And I know that that was in being able to help other people. Where do I start? Obviously for you, you needed to get, you need to fill your cup up first. That's where that meditation retreat came from first. I need to get right. I need to get my you know, ducks in a line and to focus on myself, get myself in the right headspace. And then I can reassess where life is heading. Then that's where it comes to, okay, right, that's done. Well, that you never, that's never done. You're always going to keep working on that, but that's just cleared the mind, started to fill up your cup. And then, okay, what's the next thing? What am I interested in? So many people, unfortunately, get to that point. It's like, well, what do I do? I've been in this job for X amount of time. I've already got this. For yourself personally, you're a single mom. You've already got, you know, two teenage boys. It's, that's very hard. You're very already, you know, in depth in your career to try to make such a crap, uh, crap I was going to say drastic life change. Um, and again, kudos to you because that is super inspiring. If you guys are not inspired by that, then I just, you listen to the wrong podcast. But, um, and then, so you've sat down and done that process to think about what, the, what it sparks me up. What, what am I passionate about? And I, again, encourage guys, if there's something that you want to do, just try it first. And if you don't know what it is, think what Beck's done. What, what am I passionate about? What is something that I know could, I could turn into a possible you know, job or income or career that I'm passionate about. You said fitness. Fitness was the thing for you. Even though you had no... Oh, sorry, guys. That was a phone call coming through. Even though you had no prior, you know, fitness background or anything like that, you just thrown yourself into it. Because generally, it's someone who's like, I don't know, you know, might be a, a bodybuilder or something like that who transfers in. You've just been a normal active person. And I love that. That is so good that you're willing to do that. And you're going to finish that. And you're going to be qualified. So that's really cool. Take the motivational points out of that. Go away. Sorry, it's my brother. I won't stop calling me. Um, and now that leads to the next one, which is again, because understand when it comes to any kind of job right now, you can't just rely on one income stream. So how can we diversify what you're doing now? Normally one person would obviously get qualified first and then focus on the next thing and then focus on the next thing. But for you to just go all in with a lot of things, that's fine. Like, I love that. Take that risk. That's It's going to pay off massively. So then you've like, and this is where I knew as a personal trainer as well, I can't just be a personal trainer because you need to have more tools to the tool belt. It's going to be good for you because you're going to provide, be able to provide more services to your clientele, therefore increase your ability to make money, but also just increase your impact on the world. And that's where obviously the, you know, the chakra stuff comes into it and that's fantastic. And you can definitely create that into its own little business thing. And then on top of that, again, you're like, well, hang on, I'd really love to look at this trading. And I think it's something that I could do. And then I know you and I have spoken about the business and you're doing the business side of things as well whilst learning trading so um and again like at the very start i said you're a single mum with two kids do you want to just i guess for the listeners how do you go about your day-to-day -day life being you know so full on with so much stuff um so i am gonna say i don't actually have my kids with me they're actually in townsville but i do work contact them for no, yeah yeah so everything else um throughout my day, I've had to, I have to be really disciplined in myself. Um, so obviously I do all those things in the morning. Um, I try not to be on my phone or on social media at all through the day, or if not limited. Um, I, I, you know, work through the day. Um, if we, because I'm working from home. So my job at the moment, I've been working at home from home since March last year. So I'm still working from home. Um, I will chuck if it's something to do with trading, then I'm looking like with the trading training or something like that, I'll chuck it on my other, on my laptop and just listen to that in the background and have that going because, you know, subconsciously I'm taking it all in um, or if not a podcast or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'll do that. But yeah, I've just had to sort of like do a massive timetable. Like I've had to literally write everything down because, you know, I've got to go to classes and stuff like that as well. So um, I've had to literally sit down and go, okay, so from this time to this time, I'm doing this from this time to this time, I'm doing that. And I had to literally schedule in everything mm -hmm. that yeah. way. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's, Otherwise, yeah, I'll, uh, I get lost in the whole thing so yeah and that's important guys because as well like you got to think we all have 24 hours in the day and there is certain people out there whether it be you know presidents or you know ceos of certain businesses you know they have a heap of stuff but they manage to make it work so why can't we as well it just all comes down to your you know time management and um you know i can see that yeah you definitely be from this to this to this to this one tip that i would like to say on that just to further it is just if you do multiple things throughout the day and you do juggle 
a lot of stuff. The trick is to make sure, yes, you do obviously need to have good time management structure and put those times in accordingly, but don't take one thing into another thing, right? Because that's when you stuff yourself up. So what I mean is you have to go from job A into job B. Don't take the mindset required for job A into job B, therefore extending job A or, you know, basically not starting job B when you're supposed to. So therefore everything just gets pushed back and then you miss the last five or six jobs that you were supposed to do. It's very important. You go from one thing, you stop, you go to the next thing. That same with personal life when it comes to if you are in a relationship and you've got a job that's very stressful you know as soon as you go home leave that shit there leave the shit at work do not bring that into that other environment because it's going to affect you and that's the same with business and in all other areas but um i guess we'll, we'll, we'll come towards the end there wrap it we'll wrap it up but i want to wrap it up with one last question it's like so if you know if you were if you were listening to this podcast right now like and you were someone who's like shit, I'd really like to try this or I'd really like to do this or, you know, just sitting on the edge of wanting to be like you were, say, six, 12 months ago. What would advice would you give to that person? Um, I would, look, I would just say whatever your intuition and whatever your inside voice is telling you, just go for it. Seriously, like just, 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 if it, if it lights you off, if it gives you passion, just go for it and, and don't be scared. Like I tell you what, I'm totally jumping out of my comfort zone doing this tonight. So, uh, right. sorry, yeah. So, um, but that's fine. Um, but I think one of the things um, when I was listening to the IME podcast, one of the things that really jumped out um, with one of your podcasts was you're always on the edge of your comfort zone, and that really stood out to me. So I was like, right, I need to do this, um, and I just believe that yeah, just just do something that that makes you feel uncomfortable um just just go for it but um yeah I think that's I, I literally believe like I've been doing one thing that makes me uncomfortable every week so mm, mm, that's awesome I love that and I, I forgot to mention the other you probably guys can't tell from from the video and also from the audio that she was very very nervous when we spoke about this at the start and she's wearing a shirt for the for the uh, listeners that says just breathe and I thought that was perfect just to um really reiterate that we just got to focus on the breathing here um and you're 100 right though you know and I love the fact that you've essentially been someone who's come from the podcast listening been applying what it is and then you know reached out and taking you know and now you've been be able to reap some of the rewards from taking action because that's the biggest thing guys you can listen to this podcast and get as inspired as you want out of it if you don't bloody take action then what's the bloody point of it and life is short um you know we're not going to be around for very very long and the years just keep going faster and faster the older you are i'm sure you realize that so you know would you rather have a life of living the the, the life that you want on your terms living out your desires or you're going to continue to let the years go faster and faster for things that you don't enjoy and you don't appreciate or in areas and environments that don't appreciate you so really think about it guys take a lot of notes go back and listen to this listen to her story and see what it is that she did and how she applied what she learned throughout the whole journey to get to where she is and we're obviously still going to be working close together and still got you know we've got still got goals to tick and that's important because that's what life is um and the biggest thing is it's like what other choice do you have if you don't at least try what's the other what's the alternative just continue to live miserably or live co like comfortably which is boring and not where you want it to be you know as opposed to the excitement the thrills of taking risks and at least if you try something and it doesn't quite work out at least you know and then you can try something else and that's what i really really love because you're just going all in on all these different things and i just know they're going to work for you though so thank you so much for your time back i really really appreciate it um and uh we will be speaking to you all very very soon yeah awesome thank you so much i appreciate your time <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye.